Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Rocket Monday. In today's episode, we're going to talk about rocket tracking cameras. So let's dive right into it. Well, first you have must understand that if we build a rocket, we need to see it. It's a well necessity. We have to see it. However, you have to understand this one aspect. Even though a rocket building could take like eight years or nine years, the rocket launch event itself is very short, like generally below eight minutes. So it's a very, very quick event. It's like blink it and you miss it kind of moment. So it, it's a quick moment. On top of that, because of the speed, velocity, power, everything that is important to that, you need high speed cameras, aka that can shoot higher than around, uh, let's say, 100 frame per second otherwise you will simply not see anything you will just see blur that's like blur. something you, you can make out like you know okay something is going up but if you want to see how the engines are performing how the engine gimbals are performing you need something like this like where you can be like okay this is the exhaust plume this is the uh, how things are happening where if you pay attention to specifically falcon heavy launch and especially in high quality photos you can easily make out the center core is not running at full power it's not supposed to like it's supposed to run at 80 percent power while the side core is supposed to run at full power Again, these sort of thing, you can code it into a computer, you can hope that telemetry data is making sense. But again, if you have a visual confirmation, you can make out like, oh, that's happening. So it is important thing. On top of that, the events are so quick and dynamic. Like basically, let's say you have nozzles. Nozzles rotate like this uh, when they are gimbling. You can't replicate that on a test stand simply because even if you are running the engine full force, it does not have the, like, you know, it's not fighting against the acceleration. So for that reason, the only place where you can actually see it is just an actual rocket launch where you can see, oh, this is what happening. My that is my gimbals working properly or not so dynamic event requires very close monitoring without it it's not you're not gonna have any information and it's not a tool for like you know show off it's like hey i'm gonna show it off on youtube that's not the reason for that it's an engineering tool like people will invest money into this to in order to see what the hell is happening it's not a like you know luxury show off thing again that's the added boost uh, booster and advantage but the main reason the sole reason people will invest so much money into that so can they get, get feedback where they're like okay this is what i meant to happen this is what exactly happened so what is the problem like if it is that important what are the problem that we must face in order to deal with this well rockets are fast again they are meant to go to orbital velocity which is 28000 km per hour you can understand that is ludicrously fast that that is so fast that mark speed does not make any sense so rockets are fast on top of that because once you start uh, see a big rocket launch specifically like let's say saturn 5 or falcon heavy you will see the launches are quite gentle it's like oh, okay it's going well and then it goes whoosh. so not only its rockets are fast it's accelerating during this whole path it's, it's it has one mission to get as orbital velocity as possible as quickly as possible so while you are tracking here it's like barely let's say 2000 to 5000 km per hour while you are tracking here it will be like 8000 to 10000 while you are tracking at the uh, you know other orbit at when it's at orbit it will be 28000 km per hour so not only it's fast it's also accelerating so it's a very tedious thing to manage it's not like if somebody tells you oh this is the speed that's how it's going you can easily track it it's not it's like you have to compensate for the acceleration also then we come to the path aspect now path is also curved it's not like okay rocket is going straight it's going at curve why because simply because there is no orbital height there is only orbital velocity if you can get the velocity you can orbit very close to earth basically let's say below 200 kilometer and uh, if you can throw something let's say 500 kilometers it's gonna fall back that is why icbms can go that high and still fall so we don't want uh, basically uh, orbital height we want orbital velocity so the easiest way to do that is basically travel directly vertical as quickly as possible once you are outside of atmosphere you curve so ta -da. so not only uh, you have to figure out how to track something that is fast that is accelerating or not only it's also not in a straight path it's curving so you also have to take that into account then we come to the another aspect that it is a bloody rocket so it is super loud now you might be like why does that matter well if your camera is very close to it the sound is in a level where it's classified as shockwave it can physically shatter your uh, basically lens element mess up your autofocus destroy your equipment so basically the cameras that are put very close to the uh, basically launch site they generally have blast kissing to you know protect them so and it's very hot also so even if like even physically we stand it the rocket exhaust it may look like a very uh, you know pencil thin but it does not mean you can stand next to it. it's like okay that exhaust is happening here now you, you roasted here so you also have to handle the uh, temperature aspect and then it's a dangerous event itself like again you let's say everything goes wrong then everything is fine and dandy but something bad happens let's say a rocket blows up in that scenario you need those footage very quickly and in those scenarios you have a bomb that went off so it is a very tricky situation so there's another problem with it 
So how do we solve this? Again, it's a necessary thing. So how do we solve it? Well, we employed uh, old tactics, which is known as divide and conquer. So the whole tracking was divided in three core sections. Again, it's not absolutely there is no like you know hard line or uh, you know blurry line. It's just like we divided it into three sectors. Now each sectors uh, like you know different cameras specifically built for different things. So we have mid range, uh, you know close range, mid range, and tele range. So before 15 seconds, basically uh, you ignited the rocket, and before 15 second mark. Arc, generally you will be covering the rocket using wide angle systems this will be the closest to the launch site generally they will be having blast protection cooling system or sometimes some other way of dealing with the situation so that's t, uh, t plus 15 seconds once it's outside that once your wide angle can no longer capture it like basically it has cleared the tower so once you have reached that point you need second uh, equipment now that will be classified as mid camera sections where you will have something like this now mid section will track up to 165 seconds which is below three minutes so this is specifically designed to handle that kind of uh, arc acceleration and curve now once uh, it uh, rocket have exceeded that time frame generally it is traveling much faster and much further so at that point you will use the far basically a flat out telescope you have to use in that ranges so that's how we are uh, getting all the camera tracking and sometimes upwards of uh, 100 to 300 cameras are used to track e events multiple camera multiple redundancy multiple uh, backup zones and all that jazz and if you want to understand the millimeter aspect of it, you are familiar with cameras and uh, full frame cameras and all that. So understand it this way, the closest that when you see the exhaust boom specifically in the case of space shuttle, those are starts at 16 millimeters. So it's quite wide, quite wide. It's almost like fish islands. Then you start to go to uh, basically, once you are seeing the Saturn V, it's almost in this space, then you are seeing it through something that is 12,700 millimeter. So basically it's a telephoto on a level that is flat out a telescope. So, that's how we solve it basically we have three cameras specifically built for their task so the tracking becomes much and much uh, much more simpler with the telescope system you might be like isn't that supposed to be the hardest again at this point it's outside of atmosphere it's no longer as violent and it has much more uh, what you call refined orbit again it does require tracking and it does in olden days as in like before uh, 2010 it was like tracked by radar and then a person was uh, you know fine-tuning it so uh, this is a different kind of beast then you're talking about mid-range cameras those are different kind of beasts. wide angles you don't have to worry about it but then again you have to worry about how to make sure the camera does not detonate itself so that's how we solve the situation now is there any importance of you know investing so much money into this well short answer yes it's a very critical tool for disaster analysis now the worst thing nasa ever uh, built in terms of uh, life cost was space shuttle two of them blew up uh, this was challenger disaster uh, this was columbia disaster this was challenger disaster both of the time camera provided a very crucial detail basically this one uh, the seal o-rings was uh, not working properly why it was not working because the launch was delayed why the launch was delayed high altitude wind was not clearing up the problem was the seal supposed to have a operation uh, temperature range that temperature range uh, like you know went below it basically it freeze froze over the night consequence the o-ring shrunk and it was a there, is, there was a giant gap in your rocket so when you see the launch footage of this uh, basically uh, mission you can see black soot coming out of it that soot itself blocked the uh, basically leaking place so awesome nothing no problem the rocket took off and everybody was like hey it's almost over now the once it's about to reach uh, what we call uh, booster separation that it, it got hit by another high altitude high speed wind basically the reason why it was delayed that wind was there like again normal rocket can easily pass through that but because there was soot holding that seal together that seal broke Ta-da! the whole like you know the rocket exhaust started to come out no longer black soot you have rocket exhaust coming out and next to it is a giant fuel tank it went up then you come to the another second disaster which was uh, basically we had foam uh, hitting the system and again this took a very long time to refine the footage basically it was not something oh we have the footage and we just saw it it took time uh, and uh, you know a lot of careful editing to figure out what the heck exactly happened because they could see something happen but the original footage was really bad so they had to polish it refine it and all that jazz in order to actually get oh something fell something hit exactly and then they realized what the hell happened so you can understand these are very important tools so this footage like again you can try with a telemetry data but you will never understand what the heck happened like telemetry is not gonna tell you hey my booster has like you know leak on the left side it's not gonna tell you that this is gonna say okay booster is dead now so you can understand it's a very uh, critical for especially for manned flights 
and it allows for documentation and helps public awareness because you have to understand if you are investing that kind of money like the amount of money that nasa invests or isro invests or any other uh, you know uh, uh, government organization invest people need to know it's like hey why you are spending so much uh, so much money because if they don't do that they, uh, people could elect a politician who simply says i'm gonna kill nasa or i'm gonna do that and people might just cheer them on you need people to understand like what the hell you are doing like uh, okay you can say hubble telescope again they will not understand why the heck something that is like you know less than 30 tons is like you're costing few billion dollar so you have to have this for public awareness sake also then I come to the most painful part for uh, me, basically as an Indian, is ISRO. Now, ISRO recently did a launch, with I have provided the video link down below, which was a PSLV C47, mission number C47. Now, this was done in almost a few days ago, basically. And uh, again, a recent event, it's not something old ancient, it's barely a month old. So, you had this. Now, I, I thought, okay, I'm gonna watch this in HD. Here's the, the channel that was broadcasting it was national channel basically Doordarshan, India's national channel and it was in HD. Now here's the, when I saw the logo, I'm like okay the logo is in HD, it makes sense, it's a HD channel but why the hell the footage is so blurry? Then I realized when they panned the camera it was interlaced. Here's the, ISRO is not only using old equipment, it's using old cheap equipment. Like it's unwatchable in 2019 and 2020 flat out the watchable quality of these ISRO events are just unbearable. It's like dude see Seriously, seriously, like a mo normal mobile phone, not super expensive, like you know, Note 9 or something like that. Cheap MI mobile phones will have better uh, dynamic range, better quality than this. It's like, and they, when they are panning, it's like, are you serious? Like, I did not saw that. Like, I used to remember that from my VCR days. It's like, bloody hell, these are ancient cameras that they are using. Now, you might be like, that's not that important. Again, it is because if people don't see, like, the moment if I show you this video and you don't know anything about the basically data, what's exactly is happening, the first thing you will say, hey, which very old video. Video, like you know what what happened like you know past video or something like it does not look modern on top of that when I talking about camera tracking oh my god that like this starts to look like HD compared to the camera tracking that they are doing and which I specified rocket do have a tendency to blow up once in a while and it does happen no matter how good you are it will happen sooner or later and again ISRO also have a history of multiple rockets exploding it happens like anybody who tries to build a rocket it will explode sooner or later so again we did not have good footage of that it took longer to analyze what the heck exactly happened and uh, when I India wants to go into uh, basically manned flight Gaganyaan now Gaganyaan is a manned product so they recently tested uh, basically launched escape system of the Gunganyan capsule there was a camera inside it was one running at 15 frames per second in 2019 what? seriously like that is genuinely like are you serious like uh, like really because it does matter like if people see something like that or something low quality like that it looks like a toy like you do not have the details you do not understand oh those grid fins those are expensive equipment because it just looks like a blurry mess so you'll like ah, that should be like you know what 500 rupees or something like that to make it need, like uh, ISRO needs to improve this because if ISRO is running on government money, government money is basically tax money. Tax money is coming from me and you and everybody like that. So if people like me cannot see what the hell you are doing, basically, I can understand that. I can make through like why the hell the people are so stretched over because the camera is four by three and they're broadcasting in uh, 16 by nine. So I can understand, but again, not everybody will do that. And recently uh, we had a failed mission with uh, Chandrayaan 2. Now, uh, after that, people got uh, ISRO got a bit of sympathy, and Prime Minister himself uh, supported the team. But you can understand that many times people say, "Why you are wasting money on ISRO?" And many people, after Chandrayaan two failure, was like, "Okay, what's the point? Like you failed in that again. It's normal. It's supposed to happen. People should have been aware of the fact that ISRO have multiple rockets failed in the past. It's normal. Like NASA did not just build Saturn V in one day. It's like ta-da, rocket went up. No, it blew up multiple times. So that happens. Like." If people do not have the clear cut data on that, it's like people are disconnected by it. Like, I never make a video on ISRO's project simply because there is not enough footage on that. Like, literally, Chandrayaan 2, I wanted to make such a. I have to spend so much time figuring out where the, to get image from. In case of NASA, I can just open it. In case of ESA, I can just open it. In case of JAXA, I can open it. In ISRO, it's like five, six images, and most of them are like, you know, one or two megapixel images. I'm like, damn. So, 
Now, to be uh, thankful of this situation that in uh, around before Chandrayaan 2 mission, uh, government stepped in and it's like, okay, ISRO have to improve their PR relationship. There will be a dedicated uh, department and budget allotted to this situation where they're like, okay, improve your PR situation here. Now, again, it's a government organization. It could take five years or 50 years. I do not know. But again, people are aware of this, that this cannot go on. This, like, flat out, if I show you this footage, you will be like, when this was taken? Like, when this was taken? Like, old Apollo era footage is better than what India did in basically uh, 2020 so to say that should not be possible that one was done in 1969 another is done in 2020 the cameras are ludicrously cheap now right now you can buy Kronos a high speed camera which is cheap which is less than two thousand dollars heck you can open it up and like uh, cryo cool the sensor and you get much higher dynamic range and all that jazz and the lens mount is open source you can put any uh, lens mount you want so right now it's undigestible it's like why you have such a bad quality So this was my presentation on rocket tracking and rocket imaging systems. I hope you liked it, learn from it. In that case, please click the like button and share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I'd urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me an extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.